It is the year 0079 of the Universal Century. A bloody war between the Earth Federation and the space colonies of Side 3 has plunged humanity into a violent conflict which has seen the loss of life in the billions. Using newly developed military technology known as mobile suits, the colonies of Side 3, otherwise known as the Principality of Xeon, swiftly defeated Federation fleets and descended upon the surface of the Earth. The entire planet and the orbit around it would be consumed by what would later be known as the One Year War. During the early months of fighting, the Federation was faced with defeat after defeat, losing vital territories all over the world and allowing Xeon forces to gain access to resources otherwise unavailable in space. Only when the Federation successfully developed mobile suits of their own were they able to halt the Xeon advance. Their troops clashed against Xeon forces in countless theaters across both Earth and space. In the jungles of Southeast Asia, the battlefront had become a tiring exchange of skirmishes and guerrilla operations between the ground forces of either side. With the war having persisted to the point of exhaustion for Xeon, a scramble for resources across Eurasia was made in preparation to support the battles among the space colonies. With the growing parity between Xeon and Federation forces, a decisive blow needed to be dealt in order to bring the war to an end. The Earth Federation military was headquartered at the heavily defended Jaburo base in South America, and the principality was eager for a means to destroy the vital base and cripple Federation command. While many in Xeon strategized a large-scale attack on the facility with mobile suit forces, one officer proposed an alternative approach. Rear Admiral Guinea Sahalin was in charge of a mobile armor development program known as the Absolus Project. A top R&D officer for the principality, he was stationed within the Southeast Asian theater to complete the testing and deployment of his work. The Absolus was a weapon of considerable size, designed to be capable of both atmospheric and spaceborne flight. Its purpose was to penetrate Federation defenses in orbit in order to descend upon Jabro and utilize its mega particle cannon to annihilate the base in a single blow. Initially, Federation forces fighting within the Southeast Asian theater were unaware of the Absolus project or its mission. The first mechanized composite battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Kojima, was deployed to investigate rumors of a Xeon base in the region. Known simply as the Kojima Battalion, this unit would engage in countless skirmishes and reconnaissance patrols in a grueling search for intel on the Principality's objectives. Circumstances shifted in their favor when, during a test flight of the Absolus, the prototype mobile armor encountered a malfunction, causing it to pass over Federation-held territory. After briefly engaging mobile suit patrols, the Absolus was forced to withdraw. This encounter caused the Kojima Battalion to focus their efforts on securing intel regarding the as-of-yet unidentified mobile armor. Over the Tibetan Plateau, Federation mobile suits were able to engage the Absolus prototype once again and finally shoot it down. Xeon forces quickly responded and were successful in destroying the mobile armor's wreckage during a skirmish high in the mountains. Eventually, Federation troops forced them to withdraw and were then able to secure the crash site. Upon examination of the destroyed machine, its purpose soon became clear to Federation military command. If the completed version of the Absolus were to be deployed by the Principality, the GHQ at Jabro would stand no chance. Federation military units, falling under the command of Captain Eason Ryer, launched a massive air and ground operation to uncover the location of the Xeon base which they now deduced had been developing the mobile armor. Admiral Sahalin, whose headquarters remained hidden beneath the mountains at Lhasa base, continued efforts to complete the final iteration of the Absolus, now with time working against him. It was during the month of November in which Earth Federation troops in Europe, under the command of General Johann Revel, launched a massive undertaking known as Operation Odessa. 
Xi'an forces, led by Lieutenant General Makuve, suffered a crippling loss, and what divisions couldn't escape back into orbit were scattered in full retreat. Left behind in the wake of the battle, Admiral Yuri Kalarni led a beleaguered force of Xi'an troops throughout the hinterlands of Asia, intending to reach Lhasa base in order to obtain a route back to the space colonies. The tide of war was churning against the Principality, and it had become clear that the battle over Earth would lose precedence over the fighting in space. As a result, Xeon ground forces stationed across Eurasia were all quickly seeking the means to redeploy from the planet. For the Absolus project, their resources would eventually be diverted towards supporting the mass withdrawal, although his project was never officially cancelled by Xeon's leadership. Admiral Sahalin was forced to comply with the retreat and divert his resources away from the mobile armor development by Admiral Kalarni. Unbeknownst to Kalarni, Sahalin would disobey these orders and continue work on the Absalus. Federation forces, meanwhile, continued their advance into Xeon held territory, launching patrols further into the mountains and jungles. During one such patrol, a Federation mobile suit team intercepted a transport craft ferrying a unit of Killarney's retreating men. Both sides exchanged fire before disengaging. From this exchange, Killarney learned of the advancing Federation troops and dispatched a column of tanks under Lieutenant Colonel Abbas to delay their advance. The Admiral and the rest of his men, upon reaching Lhasa base, were able to take refuge within the hidden fortress with the bulk of his survivors now safely awaiting transport back into orbit. Killarney himself remained outside to await the return of Abist and the rear guard. Abist and his formation of Magella attack tanks would engage and successfully stall the Federation's 8th MS team. Commanded by Ensign Shiro Amada, the 8th had airdropped into the Xeon held sector in order to conduct a reconnaissance patrol for the Federation. Having suffered multiple ambushes by Xeon forces, they exchanged blows with the tank platoon before both sides were forced to withdraw. At Lhasa base, Admiral Killarney was then able to reunite with Lieutenant Colonel Abist. Unfortunately, as they entered the underground passage into Lhasa base, they became the victims of a tragic accident in which the entry tunnel's heavily mined interior was mistakenly set off. Both Killarney, Abist, and their accompanying men were killed in the ensuing blast. This accident would leave Sahalin in overall command as the ranking officer within the region. Adding to the misfortune of the Xeon troops, this accident played to the favor of the Federation as well. The 8th had been regrouping their damaged units nearby when they suddenly witnessed the smoke rising from Lhasa base, revealing its location. Now Federation forces could finally mount a decisive assault. On December 7th, a full-scale operation was launched in order to capture the Lhasa base and destroy the Absalus mobile armor before it could deploy against the Federation GHQ at Jaburo. Spearheading the offensive was the Kojima Battalion. Their combined force of armor, infantry, and mobile suits fielded several units of the heavily armored RX-79 ground-type Gundams, alongside multiple teams of regular GMs. These advanced mobile suits gave their troops an edge over the skilled but outnumbered Xeon pilots who opposed them. Defending Lhasa base were several teams of Zaku, Gof, and Dom mobile suits, consolidated under the command of Xeon Ace, Captain Norris Packard. They were supported by infantry squads from both the local forces and the late Admiral Killarney's forces. Dotting the mountainside, which concealed the base, were numerous entry tunnels which the mobile suits were tasked to defend. While Admiral Sahalin devoted all of his attention to the completion of Absalus, Packard and other high-ranking officers prepared the Lhasa base for the Federation's eventual assault. Wounded and non-essential personnel were loaded aboard the Kurgarin, a Zanzibar-class cruiser, which had begun preparations to launch into orbit. With Federation troops nearing the base, 
Xeon forces attempted to defend the surrounding area in order to deny the enemy any chance of shooting down their evacuation ship should it attempt to take off. The Absalus, as well, would require cover if it were to deploy out of the mountain for its mission. Earth Federation ground forces, with Ryer in overall command, quickly advance into the mining town below the base. Ryer himself had established his headquarters aboard a Big Trey class landship stationed to the rear of the advance units. After sporadic fighting with Xeon troops, Federation infantry and mobile suits were able to push into the urban area. The 8th MS team was tasked with securing the abandoned town and providing escort to a team of RX-75 gun tanks. Meanwhile, advancing along the slopes of the mountain, the 3rd, 2nd, 6th, and 7th MS teams made steady progress toward the base itself. Overhead, Multiple strike fighter squadrons attacked the Lhasa base with a barrage of air-to-ground ordnance. The defending mobile suits took positions beside the base's entry tunnels and were able to supplement the firepower of Xeon infantry and anti-air troops. Captain Packard fought at the forefront of the defense, shooting down several aircraft while evading the return fire of Federation mobile suits with ease. Due to the camouflage nature of Lhasa base, the attacking Jet Corps boosters were forced to conduct low-level passes in order to visually determine the coordinates of the base's many hidden entryways. As tunnel entrances were located, the gun tank batteries below quickly saturated the area of its surrounding defenses. Federation air squadrons sustained numerous casualties during each of these attack runs. Xeon forces were hard-pressed as well. Their defensive emplacements were falling one by one to the Federation advance. Captain Packard regrouped his forces around one of the final remaining entry points, holding out alongside the scattered infantry. Meanwhile, a suppression team of Xeon mobile suits advanced down the slope in an attempt to destroy the gun tank positions within the town. Even before they could reach their target, a recon flight managed to acquire and transmit the coordinates of Packard's position. Anticipating the coming bombardment, Captain Packard ordered all defenders on the mountain to retreat within the safety of the base's underground facilities. As the gun tanks bombarded the mountainside, the 8th MS team engaged in deadly bouts of urban warfare against the Xeon counterattack. Following a short but hectic battle, the 8th were able to repel the enemy advance, allowing their gun tanks to reposition and establish new firing positions. Scattered fighting between infantry forces continued, but the Principality's troops were now retreating en masse into their fortress. The Xeon positions were steadily annihilated, as artillery hammered the mountainside tunnels with a barrage of unrelenting firepower. But deep inside the mountain, Norris and his defenders were able to rearm and regroup in safety. The Kurgerin itself was still readying takeoff procedures, packed to the brim with the retreating Xeon soldiers, many of whom were wounded or ill. As for Admiral Sahalin, the Absalus III had also been completed. But so long as the artillery fire continued to rain down upon the mountainside, neither could be launched without exposing themselves to the indirect fire of Federation troops. Having secured the mountain's exterior, Federation mobile suit teams began their advance into the tunnels of Lhasa base. Upon discovering the explosives lining the walls of each entryway, ordnance disposal teams were dispatched to defuse the improvised defenses, and they quickly set to work. Captain Ryer, however, continued to order the advance of the mobile suit teams into the tunnels with little regard for the proper disposal of the explosive mines. As a result, four mobile suit teams, including the 7th MS team, attempted to penetrate into the base before their entry points were engulfed in violent detonations. Nearly a dozen mobile suits were lost, with no results to show for their sacrifice. Further attempts to advance into the base would grind down to a halt. Both forces remained at a stalemate, with the Federation only able to lay siege to the base from outside, while Xeon troops remained trapped within, unable to launch their evacuation vessel. Recognizing that the greatest threat to the Kurgrin and the Absalus were the gun tank positions, 
Captain Packard launched a daring sortie alone against the Federation artillery. Deploying via a hidden passageway beneath the town, he was able to strike directly at the Federation unit stationed there. Packard would make immediate contact with the 8th MS team. The 8th, under Ensign Amada, were quick to intercept the lone gulf suddenly emerging within their area of operations. But the Xeon Ace easily circumvented their initial salvos of cannon and beam fire before engaging the artillery directly. Within seconds of the engagement, he managed to dispatch one of the three gun tanks crucial to the Federation assault. What followed was a brutal dogfight in the streets below Lhasa base, as the three Gundams of the 8th attempted to overwhelm and destroy the single attacking Xeon mobile suit. Captain Packard would utilize hit-and-run tactics to harass the escort units before destroying yet another gun tank. The 8th fought desperately, with each unit working in tandem to engage the Xeon Ace, while Unit 301, the sole remaining gun tank, repositioned and provided indirect fire support. Before long, the 8th had closed in around the Xeon pilot, with Ensign Amada personally engaging him. Captain Packard had managed to hamper Federation efforts long enough to buy time for the Kurgan's takeoff preparations. Signaling that he would not be able to join the evacuating troops, Captain Packard launched a final assault against the Federation mobile suits. He would go on to destroy Unit 301, the final gun tank, and in turn, the 8th MS team would destroy his mobile suit during the process. Captain Norris Packard was killed in action, having successfully neutralized the Federation heavy artillery. Though Federation forces still held the tactical and numerical advantage, both the Kurgan and the Apsilis would be free of any indirect fire when attempting to take off. The experimental mobile armor quickly sortied, with Sahalin himself manning the controls alongside his test pilot. Using its particle cannon, the Apsilis fired a warning shot in front of the advancing Federation mobile suits, drawing a burning line upon the mountain slopes. It was clear that the Apsilis' main cannon was fully capable of annihilating the Federation command post with one shot. Captain Ryer deployed a reserve mobile suit team of Jim snipers, using long-range, high-powered beam rifles augmented by his landship's reactors. The mobile suit snipers soon re-established parity over the mountainside, bringing both forces into an uneasy standoff. During this lull in the fighting, Xeon forces attempted to negotiate a tentative ceasefire with the Federation troops. With the Absolus providing cover, they identified the Kurgan as a hospital transport and requested that it be allowed to take off and evacuate the battle. After a brief parley, Captain Ryer agreed to the Xeon request, and the Kurgan launched into the skies. However, whether by ploy or mistake, Sahalin broke the ceasefire by attacking and destroying several Federation mobile suits. Ryer, in response, immediately ordered the snipers to open fire on the hospital ship. The Kurgan, carrying thousands of wounded personnel, was torn apart by long-range beam fire and was lost with all hands. Federation mobile suit teams engaged the mobile armor with elements of the sniper unit and the 8th MS team advancing onto the slopes behind them. In a volley of precision beam fire, the Absolus had quickly torn apart the 6th, 2nd, and 3rd MS teams, destroying or damaging most of, if not all, of their mobile suits. With the ceasefire violated, the Absolus then fired a full charge of its destructive particle beam, though by unknown factors it missed the Federation's main force, vaporizing the mountains nearby instead. As other units in the 8th temporarily fell back, Ensign Amada remained to continue the attack. He was able to close in against the Apsilis, while at least one of the gym snipers entered within engagement range and moved to support him. Sustaining long-range beam fire, the Apsilis suffered critical damage to its support and flight capabilities. 
Disabled, only for but a moment, Sahalin was able to restore the mobile armor to working order, and return fire from the Apsilis would quickly kill the pilot of the Jim Sniper covering Amada's advance. The lone Gundam from the 8th team suffered extensive damage in his assault upon the mobile armor, while Federation artillery from the field headquarters bombarded the Apsilis with minimal effect, attempting to destroy it before it could fire the particle beam cannon once again. Relentless and undeterred, Amada dealt a fatal blow to the Apsilis, just as it managed to fire upon the Federation positions. This final, defiant shot from Sahalin would obliterate the main force's base camp, killing Captain Ryer and hundreds of support personnel. Ensign Shiro Amada had managed to destroy the Apsilis, but was killed in action during the attempt as well. Lieutenant Colonel Kojima, however, was fortunate enough to have departed headquarters with the 8th team, who had already redeployed back into the fighting. Now with Kojima assuming command of the surviving units, Federation troops were able to secure a Pyrrhic victory. Aside from the remaining members of the 8th MS team, the Kojima Battalion and other participating units had been devastated during the course of the operation. The Xeon base and all troops within had been completely neutralized, and the field commanders of both sides had been killed in the fighting. The pressing threat to Jabro had been stopped, and multiple regions within Southeast Asia had been reclaimed from the Principality's hands. Even as the Absalus project attempted its mission at great cost before the end, Xeon forces had already staged a failed raid on Jabro days earlier completely disregarding Guinea Sahalin's ambitions and contributions. Lhasa Base, one of the few remaining Xeon strongholds on Earth, had been captured. The fallen of this operation were but few among many that were lost during the bloody course of the One Year War. Aces like Norris Packard and Shiro Amato would go on to inspire many simply by the recollection of their legacies. All the while, the war would continue throughout the end of 0079, intensifying in space as many had predicted. In Southeast Asia and many other distant regions of Earth, Xeon holdouts which had been left behind were forced into hiding. As the war came to its eventual end, these remnants lived on in the hopes of one day exacting revenge upon the Federation. The conflicts of the Universal Century would continue throughout the following decades, in many of which these soldiers would prove to be a long-standing thorn in the side of the Earth Federation. There will be more battle records from the Gundam universe in the future. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay informed of their release.